I'm Troy Kirby with MLT News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. On the Senate floor, lawmakers debated Substitute Senate Bill 5140, which would prohibit healthcare entities from restricting healthcare providers from providing services related to pregnancy complications. You know, there are, this should not be controversial. We're talking about uh, allowing healthcare providers to provide reasonably medical, reasonably related medical services to women who are experiencing pregnancy complications. And narrowing this does nothing but put providers in fear of, is this the right kind of complication that I need to treat right now? When that patient's life or health could be at risk. I think you can admit that we all want women to have the best possible health care, especially if they're pregnant. There's an added layer of responsibility there that we have as a society. So I went back and I watched because I got a lot of emails about this. And um, people were saying, this is happening, this is happening. But here is the testimony that we heard from the doctors. This was the quote. I would hate to have this happen because this law wasn't in place. They weren't saying, this has happened to me. Likewise, with the women who testified, they told us their very personal and moving stories about their challenges with losing their children, their babies. And, um, and they said, you know what, I got great care but I would hate to think that someone might not. So that's a very different situation than this is happening and we have to address it right now. Every person who testified said, I would, I would hate to see this happen. But no one testified that it had happened. This is not a provider mandate. This bill does not require a provider to choose between their beliefs or providing medical services that they don't agree with. What this does is it prevent, protects medical providers from, being, from having adverse employment consequences taken against them for providing reasonably medically necessary treatment to pregnant women. Uh, Madam President, in the testimony before the uh, Senate, uh, uh, health care and long-term care committee, um, their claim was made that there had been cases of physicians being unable uh, to practice a standard of care because in the case of an ectopic pregnancy uh, where there had been uh, cardiac activity, actually uh, where there'd been a heartbeat, that they were not allowed to operate uh, and remove the ectopic pregnancy. In fact, this is not the case. There was not any evidence presented of any cases like that. Uh, in the religiously oriented hospitals that this bill is aimed at, uh, they uh, would uh, you know, save the life of the mother uh, to do otherwise would risk maternal hemorrhaging and malpractice and simply uh, doesn't happen uh, due to the nature of the atopic pregnancy ultimately narrows the protections that are contained in the underlying bill. This bill, I want to remind you, is already narrow in scope, applying only to pregnancy complications. And these protections within the underlying bill are critical for our providers and for our patients. And as someone who's suffered an ectopic pregnancy, as Senator Padden was referencing, I can attest to uh, how traumatic that experience is and uh, share that uh, timely care is extremely important. Substitute Senate Bill 5140 passed the Senate 2920, moving on to the House for consideration. In the House Capital Budget Committee, lawmakers heard testimony on House Bill 1030, which would create a Community Aviation Revitalization Board to provide loans to airports. Good morning. For background, the Community Aviation Revitalization Loan Program was created in the 2018 Capital Budget with a $5 million deposit into the Public Use General Aviation Airport Loan Revolving Account. House Bill 1030 is sponsored by Rep Dent and codifies the Community Aviation Revitalization Loan Program. 
The bill creates a community aviation revitalization board and sets forth its membership, administration, powers, and duties, including making loans for general aviation improvement projects. So Ms. Robinson did a great job of explaining how the program works. And actually the program has been in, in operation now for almost two years. <clears throat> and, uh, but the idea of the bill is just to codify what we're doing, make sure we're in statute. And the reason being is because there could be years when we don't have money put into the account, but there's gonna be money coming back from the payments. So it's important that we have a place to put that money so we can continue the program. So how this differs from the grant program from the uh, WAS.Aviation Division is the grant program works for airport infrastructure, such as pavement and things like that. But this loan program can be used for other things and a, and a, and a local airport could actually uh, speed up the process of a, of a program they want to do uh, with if they could borrow this money to do that. So what I mean by this money could be used for other things is it could be used for economic development. And um, my question is about the, the changes to the makeup of the board and what improvements did you make to get the bill to this place? Uh, on the original bill, uh, I had put in there that uh, the, the chair and the ranking members of the transportation committees would be included on the loan board. And the governor uh, uh, didn't, didn't care to do it. He didn't want legislators on the board. So, um, so that provision is no longer there. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by MLT News, covering the 2021 legislative session.